Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Ready to tackle this preseason AP Top 25 poll, which as we all know, means that college football is right around the corner. We have our first legit football game this upcoming Saturday between Austin P and Central Arkansas. We have a couple games next Thursday on September 3rd. And while these might not be the most exciting and marquee matchups that we all want and that we are all used to seeing during week one, it is still college football. And as we've said for months now, that is something that we didn't think was possible uh, when all of this madness started. So college football is back, guys. It is back. It is in full force. And we are here to break everything down for you from now until the end of the season. And it all starts right here with this AP Top 25 poll, guys. And we do know that not all the teams listed in these rankings are going to be playing football this fall. Uh, if you take a look, we know the Big Ten, we know the Pac-12, we know the MAC and the Mountain West, which some of those conferences don't apply here. But all of those conferences canceled their college football seasons. So Ohio State, Penn State, Oregon, Wisconsin, Michigan, USC, Minnesota, Utah, and Iowa. Nine teams, guys. Nine of the teams listed here will not be playing football. But we did want to share you the, the real AP Top 25 poll. The one that the Associated Press really thought the ranking should have looked like had nothing been happening this entire offseason but of course if you want to take those teams out if you don't want to you know talk about them you can look at it really all these teams are going to move up a little bit and it's going to create rooms for some new teams so if you want to look at the AP poll without those nine teams you would add Memphis, Virginia Tech, Miami, Louisville, Appalachian State, Kentucky, Baylor, TCU and Virginia. Those would be the teams listed 17th through 25th. And I know that's a lot to take in. We're not going to touch on that now because after the first week of the season, we'll come out, they will come out, we will come out with updated rankings that will not include the nine teams that are listed here right now. Will not include teams from the Big Ten and the Pac-12. That's a lot to take in, but let's take a look at the real AP Top 25, guys. Let's take a look at this rankings here, these rankings here uh, that include the Big Ten and the Pac-12 and share our thoughts and opinions on those because as you all know, here at the Gridiron Expert, we have never really agreed and seen eye to eye with some of these rankings committees, both within the Associated Press and within the College Football Playoff Committee. So of course, we still have a couple discrepancies here, although we did correctly predict nine teams uh, in this AP Top 25. We came out with our way too early Top 25 back in January or February, and nine of our predictions stayed true, uh, including six within the Top 10. Uh, we correctly predicted Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Penn State, Oregon, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, Michigan, and Tennessee. So nine out of the 25 teams, guys, we correctly predicted back in January or February. But let's take a look here. You look at this AP Top 25 poll, and, and there's not much discrepancy, and not much to, to fuss about within the top 10. Uh, we knew that Clemson was going to be number one. That was almost you know a given. Uh, we knew Ohio State was going to be right behind them. Alabama right behind them. So the top three, I think everybody could have predicted. It was once you hit number four, that's where things started to get interesting. Uh, we knew the, the teams that were capable of being a top 10 teams. We knew the teams that were going to be within the top 10 it was just a matter of where were you going to list them. Uh, the AP put Georgia up at number four. They put LSU down at number six. So the reigning national champions, guys, who, as we all know, lost so much talent from that squad last year, arguably the best college football team maybe in history. They lost so much. They're not fourth. They're not third. They're sixth. That's still pretty dang good. Still pretty dang good for Ed Ogeron on his squad. And as we've said for months now, we really don't think LSU is going to take that big of a step back as some people think they will. So LSU at 6, Penn State at 7, Florida at 8. We had Florida at 6, actually, back in our uh, original rankings. But Florida, the Gators, coming in at 8. And then Oregon and Notre Dame rounding out that top 10. We overlooked Oklahoma because I personally believe that Oklahoma is ranked too high in these rankings. 
Now, of course, the Associated Press and the playoff committee, for that matter, aren't supposed to take, you know, matters outside of the gridiron uh, into account. Uh, you know, they're not supposed to take injuries into account. They're not supposed to take suspensions into account. They're solely supposed to rank these teams based on skill level, uh, based on their wins and their losses. Uh, so maybe Oklahoma is in a perfect spot for some. But I look at the Sooners this year, guys, and we know they're dealing with a brand new quarterback in Spencer Rattler. We know they're very thin at the wide receiver position. We know they're very thin now at the running back position, now that Trey Sermon is gone and Kennedy Brooks has decided to opt out for this season. So you look at Oklahoma, and I just don't see them as a top five team right now. Absolutely top ten. I'm not saying they don't deserve to be top ten, but I think fifth in the country is a little too high. I originally had them at eighth, and I think that would be a better spot. So maybe bump LSU up one spot. Maybe bump Penn State up a spot. Uh, But I don't like Oklahoma being at number five in the country. Uh, And certainly time will tell. Uh, Once the Sooners start playing football, guys, remember their first three games were against Kansas State, Iowa State, and Texas. Uh, Kansas State beat them last year. Iowa State almost beat them last year, only fell by one in Norman. And then, of course, Texas, a great rivalry matchup. Both teams always give each other a very difficult fight. So within those first three weeks, Uh, Oklahoma will have a chance to prove themselves and show everybody that they deserve to be a top five team or or whether they were a little overhyped. And right now, I'm going with a little overhyped right now. So there's your top ten. Not many discrepancies there outside of Oklahoma being fifth. I just think it's a little too high for Lincoln Riley and the Sooners. You drop out of the top ten, and we like to take a look at at everybody from 11th to 25th. You know, I think everybody's so focused on that top ten because that just sounds cool. We are a top ten team. Well, look, if that was the case, if the top 10 was the only thing that mattered, we just rank the top 10 every week. There would be no need for a top 25 poll. Uh, and, and that's what we've been trying to stress for years now, guys. And I stress that with the College Football Playoff Committee as well. I think they kind of get lazy after they get outside of their top 10. And you just can't do that. So we look here, 11th through 25th, uh, we start off with Auburn, starting in this column over here. You have Auburn, Wisconsin, Texas A&M, and Texas. That's 11th through 14th. Uh, Of course, Wisconsin will not be playing, but I look at Texas as another team that I think is a little too high in these rankings, guys. I look at Texas here. They came off a great bowl win over Utah in their season finale. That's fantastic. Did anyone forget that they had a very lackluster season and were one of the most disappointing teams in all of college football in 2019? I get they returned Sam Ellinger. I get their very high expectations. I get that maybe playing a conference-only slate with that additional cupcake team in the non-conference might benefit Texas because now they don't have to travel to Death Valley to take on LSU. But I look at this Texas squad, guys, I think we have them winning seven to eight games with our updated predictions. They're a solid team, without a doubt. But I don't think you need to start them inside the top 15. I originally had Texas all the way down at 24th. I know you Longhorn faithful will think that's ridiculous and not fair. But we always know the AP poll kind of caters to these elite teams, kind of caters to these teams that have that historical uh, figures and historical aspects within within their programs. Texas is one of them, and USC is one of them as well, coming in at 17th. Again, USC not going to be playing football this year, but how can you rank the Trojans? How can you rank the Trojans inside the top 20? It blows my mind. There is no reason for USC to be ranked here. They lost their bowl game by, I believe it was 25 to Iowa, who they only have ranked at 24th. Again, both those teams not going to be able to play this year. Yes, USC returns a lot of talent. We know that. Keaton Slovis at quarterback. The the elite wide receivers. A solid defense. I think it returns 10 starters. Now with Todd Orlando as defensive coordinator. But you win eight games, get blown out in your bowl game, and you're going to be ahead of the team that beat you in that bowl game, and you're going to be in the top 20? It doesn't make any sense. I think that's ridiculous. I didn't even have USC ranked. I would have had it in my top 30, right outside, looking in. But no way are they a top 20 team, in my opinion, going in to 2020. And, of course, we will not even get a chance to see uh, if they could do that or not, if they would be able to be a top 25 team or not, unfortunately. So USC there, I don't like Texas being too high. And we've been ragging on these teams, guys. We've been ragging on the teams that we think are too high. Let's talk about a team that we think is too low here in these rankings. And that's going to be Oklahoma State. I had Oklahoma State at 11th in our way too early top 25. 
Very high expectations for the Cowboys this year, guys. And I know 15th to 11th isn't that big of a difference here, but I do believe I would rank Oklahoma State above Texas. I would put Oklahoma State above Texas A&M right now. Uh, you take out Wisconsin, I would put them there. So I would have Oklahoma State at at least uh, 12th if, if you move everything around in this real poll. I'd have them at least 12th right now. Maybe not. Uh, maybe even 11th. Because you've got Spencer Sanders, you've got Tylen Wallace, you've got Chuba Hubbard, you've got everybody coming back on your defense, guys. And again, kind of like Texas, even though Oklahoma State didn't really have any marquee matchups in the non-conference, a conference-only slate, with the exception of that Tulsa game, could be beneficial to the Cowboys and Mike Gundy. Because, of course, they are Big 12 title contenders, and if things go their way, they're dark horse playoff contenders as well. So... I think Oklahoma State's getting slept on here. I think they've been slept on all offseason. Everybody wants to praise Chuba Hubbard. Everybody wants to talk. They love the name. They love the player. They love the stats. They love his effort. Well, if we're going to praise Chuba Hubbard, if we're going to praise Oklahoma State, we might as well give them the respect that they deserve, and that's bumping them up a few spots. I think the Cowboys do surprise this year, and within a few weeks, they'll be within uh, the top ten. So moving down the list a little bit. We've moved it around. Uh, we're working our way down Oklahoma State. We hit USC. We actually correctly predicted Michigan at 16th. I know the Wolverine fans won't like that. I know Wolverine fans won't be thrilled with the Wolverines uh, uh, coming in at 16th, right outside the top 15. But to me, that's a very fair place for Michigan. Uh, I don't like Minnesota. I don't like Minnesota being at 19th. I think that's too low. I think the AP poll made a mistake there. Uh, what, what, I don't know what their reasoning was there. I don't know if the loss of Rashad Bateman... Um, choosing to opt out was a reason for this for them being so low. I don't know if it's because even when Minnesota was undefeated last year, people were still sleeping on them. I don't know what the reasoning was behind uh, the Associated Press ranking Minnesota outside of the top 15, behind the likes of Michigan, behind the likes of USC. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Minnesota's way better than that. And I think if I were P.J. Fleck, if I were actually playing football this season, I would be using this ranking while it is an honor to be nationally ranked, I would be using this ranking uh, as some motivation going into this season because Minnesota was going to be really, really good in 2020. Uh, but again, unfortunately, like Michigan, like USC, like Wisconsin, like guys like that, we're not even going to get to see the Golden Gophers take the field this season. So that kind of rounds out our top 20, guys. You've got Cincinnati. You've got a group of five team coming in at number 20, and that is your first group of five team being listed here. And that's what also caught me off guard because you have a Cincinnati here, you've got Central Florida over here at 21st, uh, and then you have, that's it. That, sorry, that's it. That's all you have within your group of five. Who's missing? Who's missing out of this top 25? It's Memphis. Where is Memphis? Where is Memphis in this top 25, guys? Memphis was the highest-ranked group of five conference champion last year. They went to the Cotton Bowl and challenged Penn State for a full four quarters. They bring back their best players offensively. The defense, of course, needs a little bit of work, but kind of like Oklahoma State here, their offense is going to be one of the best in the country. So where is Memphis in all of this? Did they not rank them because they lost Mike Norvell? Ryan Silverfield, I thought, did a good job despite the loss in that Cotton Bowl. thought he did a good job coaching. I thought Memphis made a fantastic hire promoting from within. So why aren't the Tigers ranked in this top 25? Remember, once you take out these nine teams that aren't playing football, Memphis would be 17th in the country. They would be the lowest ranked group of five uh, team within the ones that are already ranked. But Memphis would be a top 20 team if you take out those nine teams. So I guess you take it with a grain of salt. But... With the original top 25, it blows my mind that the Associated Press did not put the Tigers in these rankings. I cannot believe that they are not. E even just within the 21st to 25th range, I, I can't believe that the Tigers aren't there. It's not like they lost that much. You know, I would understand they lost a lot of key pieces, but they really did. They've got a lot coming back, and they will once again challenge for that American Athletic Conference crown and a chance at a New Year's Six Bowl game if, in fact, we do have a postseason. So that was what surprised me. Boise State, another team, usually a uh, perennial top 25 team, not even ranked in these rankings, but, of course, the Mountain West won't be playing football anyways. Uh, and Boise State did have an unfortunate ending to last season, another reason that could contribute to them not being ranked in the top 25. 
So you look at that, guys. You're 21 through 25 here. I'm shocked that Memphis isn't in it. I'm okay with Central Florida. I'm okay with Iowa State. We had the Cyclones at 21st, so 23rd, not too big of a difference there. I'm cool with that. Iowa State, our projected Big 12 Conference champions. Go check out our updated predictions, guys. It's going to blow your mind. But we do have the Cyclones winning the Big 12 this season. So Iowa State will certainly rise in those rankings over the course of 2020. Tennessee at 25th. The only other thing here is Utah. I think maybe you sub out Utah for Memphis. How can you justify putting Utah in the top 25? They ended the season with blowout losses to Oregon and Texas, and then lost everybody from one of the best teams in program history. They lost their quarterback in Tyler Huntley. They lost their best running back in Zach Moss. They lost three of their top five pass catchers. They only have two returning starters on defense. They're dealing with Jake Bentley now, coming in as a transfer QB from South Carolina. You know, you look, you look at all these factors over in Salt Lake City, and while we do believe Utah would have had a solid season within the Pac-12 had they been able to play this season, I don't think they deserve to start the season in the top 25. They simply lost too much uh, and finished poorly. All those things combined to me doesn't add up to a top 25 team. So I think you could take out Utah and throw Memphis in there. To me, that makes more sense. Now, at the end of the day, this AP Top 25 poll is one that really doesn't matter too much. It matters for the teams that are playing because their rankings aren't going to change. The, te- the conferences and the teams listed here that are going to be playing football are going to benefit because they're going to move up. Everybody's going to shift up in the rankings when the next AP poll comes out here in a few weeks. So they'll shift up. They'll, their rankings will improve. A bunch of new teams will usher in, just like we mentioned earlier, teams like Memphis and Virginia Tech and Miami, guys like that. They'll all be ushered into the top 25, and then the fun will really begin because then those rankings really will be dictated based on performances out on the field. But for now, guys, the preseason AP Top 25 poll, the real Top 25 poll going into this 2020 season, one that begins this Saturday with an FCS matchup between Austin P and Central Arkansas. College football is right around the corner, guys, and like we've said, we will have you covered every single step of the way. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. And also make sure to check out everything down in the description below where you can follow us on our social media pages over on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And also visit our new website, thegridironexpert.com for exclusive content such as our newsletter and expert picks that you do not want to miss. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert. Thank you.